get right into it. Oh, what's going on, YouTube? It's Finder K, and today I'm bringing you guys a God Guide on Ymir. Uh, thanks to Fairy, he donated $45 for Ymir uh, God Guide, of course, in the solo lane, because that's what I do. Um, we were going to do a poll, but Fairy wanted Ymir, and I agreed with him, so we're doing Ymir. Um, so we're going to go over everything that we normally do. The start, laning phase, your build, how to play team fights, little tips and tricks, and, you know, just helpful things like that. So, yeah, let's begin with the start. So your start is, of course, going to be Warrior's Blessing right now. Um, I like to go Tier 1 Boots, a Chalice, and this will this will um, consume all your gold. It's because Warrior's Blessing is 700, Boots are 500, so you're at 1,200 right there, and then Chalice is 300, so you're at 1,500, which is your starting gold. Uh, and this should, this should just be your start. Let me go down a level. It's level 1. So this way you'd be at level 1. Um, uh, I really like to start on Ymir, especially because he's one of the Guardians in solo that actually gets pressure. He gets pressure in pretty much every single matchup. He can out-trade. His clear is really, really good early on uh, because of the low cooldown on his 2 and how much damage it does. Um, so yeah, he's actually one of the few Guardians, similar to like Ardeo and maybe a little bit Athena, who can actually gain pressure in lane. So, um, He's also one of the few Guardians that can solo the, en the enemy solo, even like a warrior, pretty consistently because he does so much damage. A lot of his damage is easily confirmable with his freeze, and nobody has like CC immunity early on. Um, and because you have so much pressure in lane, I like to start a whole lot because you'll get to your 1050 gold very, very fast. Um, it'll literally take you, like at level 4, you should have enough gold for it. And a lot of times what you can do is back, um, once your blue respawns, get blue, um, back TPM with full boots and walk up to the wave and be chillin'. Um, from there on. Uh, and it's pretty simple. I'm going to let these minions die real quick. Uh, it says I have three abilities, but I actually don't. I only have my two right now. Um, the way you play Ymir in the laning phase is you focus a lot on clear because you do out clear pretty much everybody. Um, but similar to other gods, you can focus on clear and poke at the same time because of your cone abilities and your uh, AoE abilities. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, usually, you know, this is level one. Um, since you do extra damage to the minions with your autos because of your passes, uh, which I'll explain in a second, your clear is going to be really good. Like, look, I'm hitting that for 68. Every other solo, especially with Warrior's Blessing, is going to be taking a lot longer. And uh, since my two is on such a low cooldown, I'm going to be out clearing level 1 against pretty much everybody, against most people at least. Um, there's some characters that might not clear me, like Bologna and stuff. Um, but that's pretty much what you do. But the way you clear the wave and also hit them with your, uh, your poke, is whenever they walk up to the wave, you freeze the front minions and they'll be in here and you hit them and the entire wave with your two. That way you're focusing on out clearing them but also getting poke uh, in the meantime. And if I have blue buff, I wouldn't be even threatened by the, uh, the uh, low mana here. So uh, it's pretty simple. That's just how you play Ymir in the laning phase. There are some things that we should probably talk about. Uh, certain matchups. Let me uh, go level up real quick. I'm just going to get to level five. Um, so basically, the simple part of that is that, uh, I'm just going to get cooldown boots real quick, is that uh, you try and hit them and the wave, and one way you can do that is to, to uh, secure the damage is with your freeze. Just make sure, you know, when they walk up the wave, do it. Um, so a couple of things we should talk about is Ymir's wall is pretty useful. Sometimes you don't want to level it at level 5. You just want to have three points in your 2, a point in your freeze, and a point in your ult. Um, but if you actually can make use of your, your wall. So like a matchup like that would be, like say you're against a Terra, um, and you know in some more rare uh, scenarios against a Loki um, against a character that literally has to hit if there uh, is a wall in the way they won't do damage to the wave like a Guan Yu with his towel or salt his shred or whatever um, these are examples I mean Ymir is really good at, at Guan Yu anyway because he can freeze his towel or salt but um, a lot of times what you can do is just wall off when they're going to use their abilities and then they don't do damage to the wave which means they're going to get out cleared even harder and it's going to make it even harder for them so for an example you can wall off a Loki decoy and it won't do damage to the wave and it really fucks with them uh, you can wall off a Terra when she dashes through her monolith or her, her walls and she won't be able to uh, dash again um, you can also freeze that dash and it'll uh, fuck it up as well. Uh, you could wall it off before she even hits the monolith is the thing. Um, if she hits the monolith, she'll get another uh, hit off. But, I mean, look at this. I have cooldown boots and only a rank 2, level 2, uh, glacial strike, and I'm just full clearing. So Ymir's strength is that he, he clears super well. He can also poke. He's super tanky. The only, only one of his issues that um, you have to worry about in the laning phase is that you're kind of easy to kill. Um, you can kind of 1v2 pretty well, and you also 2v2 really, really well early on because you do so much damage. But um, one of his issues is that he's so slow that he can get ganked pretty easily. Um, another thing we can talk about for the laning phase, um, and this goes towards like even maybe the mid game, 
is when you're invading blue and you have your ultimate, this does 500 damage, right? Um, and if you channel it up, like, it'll out-secure pretty much every solo laner that you're playing against. Um, only thing that I could think of that maybe would out-damage it is maybe, like, an Odin Bird Bomb. Uh, but even then, I'm pretty sure Ymir should out-secure him. So a lot of times what you can do is, let me go over to blue buff real quick. So let's just say that you're you're playing the laning phase, you realize their blue is up, you don't have to worry about a gank. You're kind of owning a lane because Ymir kind of should do that. Um, I don't know if the health is going to be the same as it would be in a regular game, but basically you just walk up to it, auto it, and do that with your ult. And you literally one-shot it, right? And notice that the blue buff was about 70% uh, health. So that means whoever walks up here, you know, whoever you're playing against, they walk up to it and try and do da try to do damage to it, they actually won't secure it. And if they do damage to it, it'll just put it more in a threshold for you to actually secure it. So you're almost always going to out-secure on blue, so that's one of Ymir's strengths right now for sure. Um, even with a rank 1 ultimate, because the way you level Ymir, at least is how I play Ymir solo when I level him. Um, let me just go to level 20 real quick is like this like i said you could point skip your wall if you don't need it early on and put three points into your two but you want to get the wall at level six most likely just because it's uh pretty useful and even in matchups where you can't interrupt clear or anything like that so you max out your two and then your three before you put any extra points into your ult or your wall um although it doesn't go up a lot in damage just having the uh the freeze do uh, more damage and also last longer is just super important. Uh, allows you to trade and lane a whole lot, especially when you get your full CDR, which is going to be part of the build, which we're going to talk about. Um, and then you put points in your ult, and then you max out your wall and your ult together, like simultaneously. Um, so in support, it's a little bit different. You can max your freeze first. You can also max start maxing your wall earlier on, earlier on, especially if it counters them, uh, because it goes up in lifetime. It'll last a six seconds, which is all. I mean, that's a very, very long time um, for people to be blocked off from a certain path or something like that. So it's kind of, it, it changes up a little bit in support, but in solo, you kind of just want to max your two into your three. Um, it wouldn't be that big of, or that bad if you put points in your ult, like I said. Um, it's just having this freeze up so often with a longer stun and also more damage is really nice. Um, so yeah, let me uh, de-level real quick. Actually, I'll stay this level. So we'll talk about the build real quick. So I like going full CDR on pretty much every Guardian, including uh, Ymir, which basically just means cooldown boots into Breastplate, and then when you have blue buff, you're at full CDR. Uh, but you could also go Shoes of the Magi, because once you have Shoes of the Magi, maybe, let's just say you're right here, uh, you're going to do a lot of damage to the enemy solo. That 10 pen is going to help a lot with your autos as well, especially with Warrior's Blessing being so uh, good right now. Um, however, I still like cooldown boots. I think it's just a little bit better than mana. Uh, cooldown's really nice, so you get more freezes and walls off, and uh, having it cooldown boots in a blue buff is already at 20% CDR, so that means if you ever do that strat, like I told you about, where you walk up to their blue and ult it, it's going to be up more, uh, a little bit faster than their ult, especially if it's a warrior, because he can't build CDR, so it's nice to have. So I like going full CDR. It's pretty core part of your build is just uh, boots, breastplate, void stone, something you could go here if your team doesn't have uh, any healing, relevant healing, where they'll go anti-heal for. You can go uh, stone a guy there and then go void stone. I do like void stone a whole lot on Ymir and increases damage by a whole lot. Um, so then I would go that. I would try and fit a void stone in there and then of course fit a McGuardian in there because that's a really good item right now. And kind of a situational last item. Um, it could be a spirit robe, could be a wing blade. I really like wing blade on Ymir. I used to love it on him because it gave him a little bit of attack speed which really helped with his passive auto damage. Uh, but it's still really good on him because he has no slow immunity in his kit besides like using his CC immunity on his ult. Um, so he can get locked down pretty easily. That's one of Ymir's biggest problems is he's so slow that he can get locked down in fights. Um, so Wingblade really helps with that to make sure you don't get locked down by the slows and you get out of the um, middle of a fight. So Wingblade's an option there. Um, and then Mantle is always an option as well. So this would be pretty core build on Ymir. Uh, basically just defense, one hybrid item, which is your Void Stone. That's going to be just enough, da uh, I guess, damage to carry you over into the team fights to make sure you're doing enough damage. But, you know, Ymir has crazy base damage numbers. Look at this, 370 uh, plus 42 scaling, which is probably like 70% or something. And then 210 here. Um, and then look, I mean, 1,100 damage plus 90. That's just absurd. Uh, so if you channel at the full length, it's going to be hitting just like a Sobek ult. Um, maybe even more. So this would be your build. Your second relic, um, if you go t TP first item, or first relic, uh, at level 1, you're usually going to be going Blink second relic. Blink's just always been good on your especially when you're playing it solo, because you can dive their backline super hard. You'd Blink on their backline, immediately freeze them, force actives, and if your team's if your jungler is with you, you can even ult, you know, wall them off, uh, get your ult damage off, and it's just so much damage. So Blink's always going to be really good on him, especially in solo, uh, maybe even a little bit better in solo. 
Um, Thorns is also an option on Ymir. I don't really like going Thorns too much now, but on a character like Ymir where you're going to be in the middle of a fight, it's really hard for you to get away. You want to like 100% commit in the fights, so Thorns is really good for that to make sure that you're, you know, diving super hard, and if they do try and turn on you, you're going to reflect a lot of damage. Um, if you do go Thorns, however, I would switch out um, somewhere in this build. Maybe not here because you don't, you're kind of lacking magical uh, defense here, which is kind of bad on Ymir because you can get focused out really hard. Uh, maybe you sell stone a guy and you go something else. You go like uh, bulwark or something, even pestilence. Uh, but if you do go thorns, then high enemy is a really good option. Um, it's a little awkward, but yeah, so it's kind of be the build. Um, so thorns is a nice second option, and then of course uh, sprints also a really good option because like I said before, he doesn't have any slow immunity. He's getting, he can kind of kind of get focused out in the middle of a fight. Uh, sprint helps with that a whole lot, and it helps out your team. And it also helps you sprint to their back line and chase people because you're kind of slow. Um, so that would be the build. You can kind of get away with literally any of these relics. Um, however, that uh, those are my preferred relics. I'm gonna go through this little troll build real quick. Um, this is a fun build to do in ranked. It's a, basically a full health build. Um, so I go cooldown boots. I go warlock sash. I go stone of Gaia. I go hide of the urchin. Um, mid guardian mail. And then maybe whatever you want last item could be a Magi's, uh, could be um, Mail of Renewal, could be Gauntlet of Thieves. Um, so this is like a really troll build. But the cool thing about this is uh, you can even sell this and go even more health, go like a wing blade. Cool thing about this is Ymir has the highest uh, base health in the game, so you can get to an insane amount of health, like 4,400. I mean, look at that. That's just ridiculous. And when I have Warlock Sash fully stacked, it'll be at 4,600. So. Um, not that this is that viable. Um, I have tried it a few times, and it's it's worked if I like snowballed pretty hard. Um, but it's just you have so much health that I mean, look at your health bar. Look at that thing, and you can't even see the lines. So it's just really cool. It should be 46 lines or something. Um, so that's just like a ability you can mess around with since Ymir has such high base health. We're gonna go Void Stone, Stone of Gaia, Mansoul, and Me Guardian. This was the build. But, uh, you know, so, like I said, one of Ymir's biggest problems is he can get, kind of get focused out in the middle of a fight and kind of locked down and easily killed. So being as tanky as possible and having as much utility as possible is really necessary. And also, that's why I like Blink on him, because you can be the one starting the fight. You can be the one to make sure that you're initiating and making uh, their backline have a bunch of problems in the middle of the fight. So that's why I like Blink on him. So let's go over some things with, as far as, like, team fight and stuff, um, some tips and tricks. So we didn't really talk about his abilities, but basically... His one is a wall, it blocks off a path. Um, his two is a, uh, whatchamacallit, what is it called? And it's a little, it's a carpet, it's a little carpet damage, I'll just use it real quick. Um, it does a lot of damage, it also applies your passive, every single one of your abilities applies your passive. Your, your freeze, or your three is a freeze, it's a, a 2.25 second stun and it does a good amount of damage as well. And then your ult is of course a very uh, long channeled ability that does a ton of damage. I mean, I just hit them for 1100. Um, so yeah, that's his abilities, but his passive is really what's important, especially in lane. So you get damage reduction, first of all, that's something they recently added, but also you get extra uh, bonus um, auto attack damage if they have the frostbite on them. It lasts for uh, four seconds, and they'll do less damage to you while you have it on them. But, so let's see, I'm going to auto him for 73, I two him, and now I'm autoing him for 146, so two times as much. This is really important in a lane because it's going to allow you to out-trade with autos against characters that you shouldn't be out-trading, right? Um, you're doing two times as much damage as you're supposed to, right, when you have that on. And not only that, this your two slows them, so you're going to be able to stick to them really easily. And if they ever get away, you always have to freeze. But the full combo and like the combo that you would, like I was talking about earlier on in the laning phase, is you want to weave in autos in between your abilities. It's not really an auto attack cancel because you're so slow with your animations and everything, uh, but you still want to weave in those autos like this. Since your freeze lasts for so long, you're applying that passive, and then now they're slowed, and you're going to be able to stick them and hit them with a lot of autos. Um, so that's going to be your combo, especially early on. Uh, you can get a lot of kills with that. But also, um, one thing with your mirror into your wall is... You know, if a character has a jump, you usually don't want to wall, because if I wall this Odin, say I'm playing against Odin, he's just going to jump away if I'm going to walk up to him. So what you want to do is you want to threaten him with, like, your other ability. Say you walk up, either, you know, threaten with your freeze or threaten with your two, wait for him to jump, and then wall off uh, after. So he has to decide to walk this way or walk that way. Um, and then you can kind of close the gap a little bit better, especially with the wall. Uh, this is at least talking about in lane. As far as team fights go, 
there's going to be a lot of areas of the map where you can wall off. And when you're at full CDR, just be looking for these uh, walls on cooldown. Um, if you just look for them on cooldown, say you're like you're starting to look up, uh, play up a little bit, and you throw a wall out, and it doesn't connect, it's not perfect. Just play back, play back a little bit because you have it up again uh, in eight seconds, and it lasts six seconds. Keep in mind. So this is when you're at full CDR. So it's a really strong ability. Um, you know, just be constantly throwing up, and if you do end up blocking their path, that's when you walk up and hit them with the freeze and force actives, or that's when their axes are down and you, they can't get away because you have a wall in the way. Um, you easily can kill them. So. Uh, that's what you should do with your uh, your wall. Um, another thing that is pretty good or pretty nice is that when you're like, say we're up against a wall right here and I wall him off, his only path to walk past if he's trying to walk away is this way. So you, you can set up your two, your glacial strike a lot of the time with your wall because you know that they have to walk this way, right? So I can just force him to walk that way and immediately two. And a lot of times that's what players do against you, Miri, is they'll immediately try and walk one way or the other on a wall. Um, so you can just throw your glacial strike at the end of the wall and you should hit them. Um, the only scenario which is a little bit awkward is where they have two options, but if you throw it like a little bit closer to this side, they'll want to go this way and you can immediately two and you'll hit them pretty much every single time because that's everybody's first reaction to a Ymir is to immediately try and walk the other way. Um, some tips and tricks against Ymir uh, are, it's really, so his cone let me turn it off uh, instant cast for a second. <laughs> Oopsies. Um, his cone on his freeze is it's a decent area, but the problem is up close it's not that it's not that big, right? Um, so when you're really up close to Ymir, like right here, I'm not gonna hit him with that. And it's gonna hit him there, but it's like I'm almost looking at him. So if you're against the Ymir, especially in lane, being really up close to them is actually uh, recommended. Um, I know it seems a little weird because if they do hit the freeze, they're going to hit autos on you, but they're going to hit those anyway, and he's going to be able to stick to you. So you might as well try and dodge the freeze by being super annoying. A lot of times I will literally walk around a Ymir like this when he's in lane, and a lot of times I've dodged freezes, and it's been super helpful. Um, so that's one thing you can do against Ymir in lane, um, or even in team fights. Just being, when you're super fast, especially like as a speed buff jungler, you can do that, and you'll uh, dodge his freeze a lot of the time. Um, so like I said, your wall is going to be your main objective in fights, your main, I guess, uh, tool in fights. You're going to do a lot of damage with your base damage, so your 2 and your 3. A lot of times you're just forcing actives with your 3, backing up. Using your wall to disengage is one thing as well. Um, if I walk up and I freeze somebody and get their actives, but I notice that they're all there and they're going to be looking for me, just like wall and walk away. Uh, one obvious thing that pretty much every Ymir player knows, um, but I will mention it anyway, is that if you, as long as you aren't slowed and you have movement speed, you will uh, be able to put your wall under you and you can walk away. So that's another way to disengage, just throw the wall under yourself and just kind of get out of there. Um, so yeah, also with the wall, especially around objectives, because I also like to talk about uh, objective play with these god guides, is um, keep in mind that your wall does get destroyed by objectives, right? See, it just immediately got destroyed. So try and use it, um, I guess, uh, smartly smartly, intelligently, so that you don't get um, destroyed by the objective. But also, you can use your wall around objectives to block off abilities. Say this is getting really low, and I notice their team is coming in, just wall it off, then boom, burst it down, and you guys secure that and don't have to worry about it. It's one of the few abilities that can, can be used for that. Um, another thing is, when you're approaching, like a character, say you're approaching their carry, and they're, say, let's just say Rama, because it's, you, Mir's a pretty good pick in a Rama because he has his dash and he can wall it off. When you're approaching them and you have your freeze up, a lot of times they're going to want to dash away right before you get to them because they know that you're going to use the freeze on them. Say I walk up to them, I want to freeze them immediately, so I'm going to do that. Um, so because of that, instead of freezing immediately, a lot of times what you can do is you walk up to them, threaten them really super hard, and then immediately throw your wall up. He'll dash into that wall, and then you walk up and freeze them. So kind of use your wall to... Uh, gap close because it pretty much is your only gap close besides sticking to them with your slows and your freezes it's really easy for them to get away so just use your, your wall to uh, close that gap you notice they're you're gonna walk up to them bait it super hard throw your wall out they dash into it and you can just walk up to them and kind of own them um, one thing also you can do is off of other people's CC like say your support you can immediately say that your support is like an Athena you can literally blink um, say you have blink let me do that you can literally blink in. So say I, this Athena gets a two-man taunt or something. I can blink in, immediately charge my ult while the CC is going off, get that damage off, and then after that CC runs out, use my freeze. Uh, it's going to be DR'd, of course, uh, after an Athena taunt, but it's still 2.25 seconds, so it's going to last a decent amount of time, probably only like half that. Um, but basically what I mean that by that is that uh, in teamfights, if there's any CC on the table, 
use your ult so that you can get the full wind up of it for a crazy amount of damage and then have your CC to follow up so you don't combo CC too hard because if Athena blink taunts or Athena taunts here and gets two people and I immediately follow up with a freeze and then ult they're going to be DR'd and it's going to be hard for them uh, it's going to be easy for them to get out rather so just kind of you know use other people's CC and lock down to make sure you get the damage off on your ult um, uh, blink freeze is a really good initiation. A lot of times it's going to force actives immediately, so you can often look to do that thing that I mentioned where you blink freeze, get their actives, and immediately disengage with your wall and back up. And then you can do it again uh, with your wall and your freeze when they're back off cooldown. So, um, another thing is just like the same concept with the blue buff um, in securing is that your ult does a lot of damage to literally everything, including objectives. So, you can use your ult to secure objectives. So, say it's getting low. Um, I throw my wall out, I can use my ult to charge it up super big and it'll do literally did a thousand damage to it. So you just have to time it correctly to kind of judge the DPS as it's going. Um, uh, that should be it. Um, I talked about a whole lot. If there's any other questions or anything you guys want me to go over real quick at the end of the god guide or anything I missed, we can uh, do that now. So if anybody has any questions in chat. Lay it on me. We'll just chill here for a second. If you aggro the objective, you can drop it like between you and Titan, block damage, and start charging your ult. Oh, okay. See what you're saying. No questions. What's the best VGS command to spam as Ymir? It's high. I don't have the voice pack, but would Soul Reaver be a good pickup on Ymir? He usually does enough damage. I don't think it's that bad. The problem is, like I said, you the only reason that would work is that you're far ahead. Um, but if it's like an even game, you, you're so easy to kill that you'd rather just have a utility or defense item. What's a one-shot Ymir build? How long does DR last? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's like 10 seconds. Maybe a bit shorter. I never knew that kind of thing. What's a one-shot Ymir build? Okay, let me look at that. You mean a viable one-shot Ymir build? Probably be something like... I mean, this would probably be like a perfectly fine viable one-shot Ymir build. You'd probably do a lot of damage with this. Let me go look. Let me go hit this guy. Yeah, Warlocks I mentioned earlier, it's... Um, <coughs> uh, wasn't in range? <laughs> That's awkward. Yeah, Warlocks I mentioned earlier, but... It's like okay on him. It's kinda troll. Usually just want a uh, more defense item, but... Alright, let's see what I do. Yeah, okay. And that's also another combo you can do is um, instead of even having to use your wall, is just get off, uh, immediately use your ult when they're in when they're frozen, so that you can get as much charge off as possible. Uh, but you know, weave in the autos between as well. So just gonna edit that part out. <laughs> oh, please, yeah. Would it be best changing cooldown boost for pen as with pot? You are at fifty percent CDR. Oh yeah, that's something I forgot to mention. So let me go back to that. Um, I mentioned it before in pretty much every one of my videos, so people should know for the most part. But once you're at here, you're at full CDR. Um, without even a blue buff and also you're gonna have a 500 pot so you can sell this for either pen boots but you could also sell it for reinforced greaves since you're gonna get focused out a whole lot then you pop that and you're at 40 percent cdr without cooldown boots so that is an option and pen boots is always an option as well so it's pretty good thank you for reminding me where's your pauline soul you're at <laughs> um so yeah so yeah just make sure you're always auto attack canceling make sure you're using your wall correctly um, and intelligently, uh, like I said, there's some trip, there's some tips and tricks like, you know, they're going to walk that way so immediately too and hit that. Make sure you're weaving in autos, I already mentioned that. Um, and you pretty much secure, out secure everybody on pretty much everything, including objectives, uh, fire giant, pyro, blue buffs, buffs, whatever it is. Um, and sometimes, and one more thing that I forgot to mention, in lane, since your ult does so much damage, what you can do is you can walk up, uh, let me clear these minions to gain pressure because you're kind of, I don't know, low tempo or you need to back or something, you can literally just walk up, start charging your ult when the minions get here, if they ever do. 
Minions? Okay. You can just literally charge your ults up um, in lane. And pull clear of those and then back up. Whether you want to back or whether you want to use your, your freeze in your two on the enemy solo, anything like that. It's, it's not uh, it's not terrible to use your ult to clear waves. So When you get beads on your mirror, if they have any like important CC like Ares, Serb, or anything like that, um, it's always an option, but usually you just want a more aggressive relic. Horrific emblem good with your mirror? Yeah, it's okay. The problem is you already have slows and enough lockdown most of the time that uh, you don't really want it. But it's still good on him, especially because you can pretty much secure the ult damage as long as they don't have a sprint or any escapes or anything like that. So, all right. Yeah, but usually they they try to um, immediately freeze Tom Ganks is the thing. Most of your mirrors do that. Um, so yeah. Is Wingblade a viable pickup like him on Ymir? Yeah, I was talking about that, Jim Jam. I think Wingblade's really, really good on Ymir. He needs it for the solo immunity. Um, so that's going to be it. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I uh, hope you guys learned something about Ymir. I do like him in solo. I think, I think he's viable right now, and I definitely think that he's one of the pressure guardian solos. So have fun. Try him out. Try him out uh, with these tips and tricks and these, uh, I guess, this advice. Uh, and that's going to be it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Boom.